good evening everyone welcome to project learn a reskill and spark your initiative aiming at upskilling tech enthusiasts on emerging ar tech with the help of workshops and hackathons and building highly engaged spark ar community through these workshops you will be taught how to build ar effects on spark ar studio and with features that enhance the experience of facebook and instagram users i am askar khan and before we start the workshop i'd run you through a small presentation to share the purpose flow application and benefits of being a part of this program as i mentioned project learn aims at helping you kick start your career in the domain of augmented reality by training you in the technology next slide the program structure is divided into three broad stages in the first phase we will walk you through spark ar studio and teach you how to create your first ar effect from scratch which involves importing assets canvas face tracking patch editor and generating test link in the second phase we will move a step further teaching you about advanced filters and share with you spark ar policies before you finally submit your ar effect submission of your effect will get you a meta certification access to resources that will help you prepare for the hackathon In the final phase, we will host hackathons at your college level and at pan India level. You will be rewarded and recognized for your efforts and contributions. Next slide. Before we move further, I will quickly introduce Sparkia Studio to you all. Sparkia Studio is a tool used by glo- global community of creators and brands to create and share AR experiences using Facebook family of apps. and augmented reality is an interactive experience which digitally enhances what can be seen heard and touched in the real world at the moment we have over 600 million plus people using ar on meta apps next slide let's have a quick look at what's happening in the world in the field of ar So there are four key capabilities where AR is being used. To give you a brief insight on how AR is being used worldwide, we have all come across these face filters on Instagram, where we can add a mask on our face. This is done using the face tracking capability. IKEA, the the popular Swedish chain of home furnishing stores, uses AR to help their customers choose the right furniture for their home through the world tracking capability. Similarly while QR codes are now normal to scan we are also able to scan pamphlets and business cards using target tracking Similarly body and hand tracking the latest capability introduced offers utility for fashion and e-commerce brands allowing users to try on an outfit digitally before they click purchase Next slide These are a few effects I am sure some of you have tried using like changing of hair color when you scream or a phone call from a celebrity. Next slide. AR also plays an imp- impressive role in escalating your gamifying experience by mapping effects with facial expressions, gestures and head movements. Next slide. AR has played a crucial role during the pandemic in bringing the world to your drawing room. by emphasizing on the moment making the content much more interactive enjoyable and memorable having said this what happens to the effect i have created well the effect can be published on your instagram user page in the stories section in the reels and guess what your effect is available to the audience worldwide to use and experience a pertinent question that arises is how does this program help me professionally There are various ways in which you can use your AR effects to your advantage. You can monetize on the platform by building interactive AR effects for brands and creators. You can become a, an AR UX researcher, AR developer and also an educator. You can leverage AR in your career by ad- identifying and solving problems. You can take the augmented reality career further into learning VR and XR. With so many advantages both immediate and long term I'm sure you you all will make the most of these workshops we had shared a download link for Spark AR Studio in the in the email I hope you have downloaded it in case you haven't please do it before we begin the session 
I would now like to introduce the mentor for the session, Paul Kakreja. Paul is a senior AI journalist at Experiential Etc. The company was featured on the Shark Tank India. He is an alumni of the Facebook School of Innovation Spark AR Open Program. A hackathon enthusiast, he has created various AR effects for brands with SPN Meta Spark Partner Affiliated Company. Hi, Paul. Hello, everyone. Hello, Oscar. Hi. So before we begin the session, let me show you what you're going to learn today. So this is the AR effect, which Paul will be teaching you how to create on Spark AR Studio. You can go ahead and learn how to build this AR effect along with him and create your own AR effects on Spark AR Studio. So over to you, Paul. Yeah, thank you for your kind introduction. I hope I'm audible properly. Yes, you are. So a warm evening to every participant. You might have checked various AR effects on Instagram, Messenger, or Facebook app. And you ever have a curiosity of creating, how those are created, how you can have your own Instagram effect, or you can create for your friends. So that's the right place. And let's get started with that. I'm sharing my screen. I hope everyone has downloaded this Park AR Studio. Let me know if my screen is visible. So this is how the interaction or starting UI of the Spark AR Studio looks like. Here you might be having the version that is version 138, which we'll be using for this workshop. You can see the Spark AR Studio logo. Create new will be the by default selected one where you can see a blank project, a shared experience and video calling experience. So shared experience basically means if we are creating an effect for Instagram or Facebook, uh, what we can say platform. And video calling experience means if we are we are creating particularly for video calling apps only while video call. Then you can see a uh, selected templates here. Various templates to get started here. We are having a couple of templates where to create specific uh, AR effects. One can be for color, body movement, target tracking, hand movement, depth overlay, audio visualizer. So these are the best places to get started and to understand how the capabilities or the effects work, what are the complex or the logic behind those effects. Then the next best thing is learn dashboard where you can see a simple tutorials explaining all everything by way from beginner level to intermediate level to advanced level. And what are the recent projects which you, you will be creating in Spark AR Studio will be showcasing here. And the last thing it's open where you have, you have downloaded or you have shared your AR effect or file, a Spark AR Studio file with your friend, you can check in by navigating towards the path and open those files. And lastly, what's new, what's new when you click on what's new, it will redirect you to the current version update or what's new capabilities has been added to the particular version. And the last option is creator community. So it's the best place to get started. I insist everyone to connect it firstly, because it's a creator community, a Facebook group where all Spark AR studio creators or AR creators share their experiences, take feedbacks, get inspiration from the uh, creators throughout the community. I hope this part was easy to understand with. Let's get started. We'll be creating our first effect which is known as Pride Rays, which was showcased by Oscar in the presentation deck. You can select a blank project or you can start with sharing experience. We'll be going with sharing experience. So whenever you create, uh, whenever you select uh, any of those options, you will get a tip of the day, which is helpful. If you want to get started, you can check those out. So this is the UI of our Spark AR Studio. One is this simulator window. It says this is the basic thing which will start in Spark AR Studio where how the screen looks of the user. So it is 
you can dock and undock it you can change various to uh, android device you can change its resolution to android device or ios device based upon your requirements how the effect how your effect is going to look on those devices by changing the dimensions you can also switch the camera to front or back or you can also show key uh, rotate it to horizontal to vertical based upon our requirements we'll dock it once again this is our scene panel based on the hierarchy the th objects are or uh, uh, what we can say effects are added then you can see the asset panel where we add or our assets that uh, that can be audios textures uh, uh, png images and 3d models so this is our workspace where we can select and we will having our patch editor where we'll playing with patches to create our logic console if there is a few scripting this console is uh, helpful uh, asset summary where we can show what are the assets or what are the things we have used in our effect it shows under asset summary now moving next thing so you can see a person in simulator window if you click on the video you can either go to your cameras or you can check or change the mascots provided by the simulator to try out uh, whenever you create an effect you should try out various uh, simulator video so that you can get to know how it goes for the general or the basic audience you can add your own videos as well which should be in webm format for today we'll be using various mascots or you can say persons simulator videos so this is the pause button if you want to pause your effect you can click on that if you want to advance a frame so basically when a effect is paused you just want to check every frame by frame like how we as fps if you want to make it like that it will you can see in my screen it is increasing of uh, just by one frame so that is an advanced frame it is an advanced capability to check your effect frame by frame you can also click on stop it will stop your effect and when you want to restart you can click on the restart effect so this is how these options are now we'll be going to your what we can say a well wisher for spark ai studio will be asset library if you don't want to create your uh, have your own assets you can use the predefined assets from the ar library like 3d assets one will be using for our effect the 3d objects are present here and it, uh, it has having predefined assets from spark ai team as well as sketchfab and if to use those sketchfab uh, assets you need to log in with a sketchfab id or create the account music and sound you can see those are various musics or uh, audio effects sound effects uh, present here by default patch assets to create certain logics which are added by the spark ai creators you don't need to create something on your own you can directly use those patches and access it textures environmental textures noise are the various textures present in ar library blocks if there are certain kind of pre made projects which can be integrated as a form of blocks you can use and you can get it from here script packages various packages to create those scripts it's like go to where you can import those scripts and uh, explore in your effect lutes that is basically look up tables like how you used to see various shades of a camera effect either it can be vintage type look black and white it can be humid various options so this comes as lutes luts so this is where you will find ar asset library or ar library so this is test on the device pattern whatever the effect will be creating we can test on our device by the sharing experience if you have linked your instagram and facebook account you might be able to see instagram and facebook both as a option and when you click send an effect will be sent towards your linked instagram or facebook account you can also test the thing which in your mobile spark ai player which i will tell about you in the later in the workshop then it's a publish button for publishing the effect which will be getting to know later stage in the workshop it's a report button if you find any kind of bug you can click on the report button and share those screenshots and here is the documentation page where if you want to if there is any uh, difficulty understanding any concepts you can search those terms or you can search about those patches but the documents will be there uh, it will take you directly to the site so this is how the basic key components of spark ai studio 
this is our scene panel like i said asset panel and this is our viewport if you can see this is how the phone camera or the phone ui looks like it's projecting the display which is visible here whatever the things it is getting projected in parametrical way in pyramid form you can see here so that's is visible whatever the things visible on your screen while opening an effect so this that will be the same here so first ho i hope everyone has downloaded it set up the spark ya studio and also downloaded the file which i have shared that was one texture spark p star png let's import that asset you can click the plus icon here which will take you to the different sets of options like if you want to uh, import from asset library animation sequence material these are the different things we'll be explaining later so click on uh, import from computer navigate towards the path where you have uh, stored your file you can see pride rays you can select the png and open i hope everybody is able to import the assets in this way in inspector panel you can see this is the inspector panel which tells more about the uh, asset or the scene if we li like we have just clicked our it's clicked right so that's why it's selected or it's clicked you can see its properties what are the file sizes what are the dimensions are alpha channel and color encoding and this is a compression technique so by default it's on automatic for ios android and older ios android phones so whenever you will be creating those there is certain guidelines for creating an effect for instagram and facebook for instagram you can create up to 4 mb size of filter or pro, uh, ar experience and for facebook app you can go to 10 mb size so your assets and whatever the whole effect or project size should be with that perspective our star png is of file size 19.58 kb and for ios it's take on device space download space if you do if you know that your uh, texture or asset is towards the least compression it's already compressed you can select the automatic to none so that it won't compress your texture based upon your requirement you can do that so we'll be starting with our scene panel you can see the device in hierarchy camera focal distance whatever the things will be adding will be adding towards the focal distance so that it's visible inside our camera view and one more thing the naming conventions for first thing starts with zero if like ambient light if you are adding first ambient light towards the software towards the program it will be zero it starts with zero now i'll be adding face tracker because the side rays require various uh, face tracking and you have seen various tracking modes it is either face tracker or it is uh, what we can say plane tracker or target tracker so these are the various trackers which is uh, accessible one is face tracker plane tracker target tracker and hint tracker for today's effect we'll be using face tracker you can select face tracker and click insert the naming convention you see it's face tracker 0 so like how i explained by default it starts with 0 so now you can see when i when the face tracker is selected you can see an object is there on the u uh, user's face and it's moving it's not visible but it's just you can see this triangles or oh, sorry th this lines or axis basically so now we'll be adding a null object towards it so now this all axis is visible earlier it was not accessible now it's accessible so uh, as the programming perspectives you can see or programming point of view you have uh, you have you might know the concept of null objects we use null objects to apply certain sets of transformations towards the uh, child or in the hierarchy what are the proper what are the properties which a null object has all these properties gets passed on to it as an inheritance towards the children we will re rename it as rays i will be creating as will be having a left ray and right ray we'll be creating two more null objects and renaming it as left eye for left eye and you can also duplicate it by clicking on control d or command d for mac 
we name it as right eye i hope till your everyone understood what are the uh, what what is the scene panel what is the asset panel what is the view port and how to add null objects into the scene and how to add texture as well so now we have created a raw file where it's having it's a null object left eye right eye currently the both are having the same position because it's not assigned it at the moment now we'll be assigning and playing with patches you can click on workspace show patch editor so if we want our beam to start from the left eye and right eye we need to provide those positions to them which we can create with help of this we naming it as face tracker you can give naming convention as per your requirement and as a good creator or developer the naming convention should be normal it shouldn't be complicated for so that others don't understand it and even it might create a confusion for you it should be simple and to the point like face tracker raise for lifetime and right eye so now we will be creating a patch inside the inspector panel you can well, if you select a face tracker you can go to inspector panel and you can see certain properties and interactions click on create just click producer patch it will create patches inside the patch editor so which is face finder it finds the face face select what if it what to do after the uh, after the computer or the ai or the model finds out the face then face tracker so this face tracker provides us the face 3d position 3d scaling and 3d rotation of the face of the user's face so currently if i select on face tracker you can see the tracked face it will select only the first face it finds it's face number 1 because only for, it's created for the single face that's why the index is 0 face count will be you can check the face count will be 1 because the because our project is able to detect one face so this count provides number of faces present in an effect currently it's 1 if there are more than 1 it will provide 2 for that we'll need to add another face tracker because it only tracks one face so let's get started we need to add a eyelid patch to get those eyelid positions we need to add eyelid patch how you can add it it's like either double clicking on the patch editor or you can click on add patch option here based upon your preference click on eyelid patch and select it so it so this is how the eyelid patch looks you need to connect the face input towards the face output face tracker output towards the input of eyelid patch and we'll be assigning this left eye and right eye position towards this and how we can do that once you click the left eye you can go to the inspector panel this is our inspector panel where you can see the certain properties where if you want to apply certain kind of transform uh, transformations towards those objects or towards those uh what we can say yeah uh, null objects we can apply using uh, those in inspector panel that is position scaling and rotation so we'll be taking an input of 3d coordinate that is x y z and assigning it to left eye center as an input to the left eye null object so now you can see if i will changing it to a single user it will be the left eye it will the position of the left eye center of that user that has been assigned to the null object of the left eye now same will be applying towards the right eye i hope my pace is proper it's not too fast you are able to understand it if there is any query you can post it in comment section we have various options also like we require currently it depends upon our requirement what coordinates we require we can choose but as we want to be the center or we uh, center of the left eye and right eye that's why you are using the output from left eye and right eye center you can also check what is left inside corner left outside corner lower eyelid center uh, then uh, what we can left uh, lower eyelid center upper eyelid center 
but currently we only require the center positions that's why we are assigning those values to our null objects so as the values has been assigned if you can see here in the viewport the left eye uh, position is in left eye moment you can select the view select front So this is the back view and this is the front view. As I've clicked the, yeah, if click on left eye, you can see it's showing the coordinate where it's present and towards the left eye and the right eye right here. Because the front is inverted. So now we'll be adding our one more asset, but which it will be from asset library. So select asset library, go to 3D objects, home, you can go to home, either you can go to 3D shapes, then select capsule primitive, click on that and select import free. You, now you can see when I've clicked on import free, it has been added to an our asset panel. And till, the, till yet, now we'll be saving our file so that uh, it gets saved and gets stored in proper directory. You can select whatever the name you want to, you can select work. I'm naming it. You can give it pride, pride raise or I'm naming it as a workshop file. A workshop effect. Make sure you know in which path or directory you are storing. So now you can see the workshop effect has been stored in users in the path. We have got all the assets we require. One is the star, texture PNG, star PNG and the capsule one. So we'll be adding this asset into our scene panel for the left type. Now you can see it has because we have applied the position to the null object and the capsule is also uh, the coordinates have been passed to the same because it's an object or child of the left eye null object. The capsule has been present towards the left eye. It's not the way we wanted, but it's, uh, it has been integrated into the effect. You can also see that in viewport as well as simulator. We'll do the same for the right eye. Select the object, drag and drop, and it will be automatically added into the inside the left eye as the child. You can see it has been added inside. We might have added one accidentally. Yeah. So currently, the orientation of the capsule is not the way we wanted. We rotating towards the 90 degree. Yeah, because we want like a beam. So you can select the capsule, go to the inspector panel, go to the rotation and rotate it in y, uh, rotate it in y axis by 90 degrees. So we'll do the same for right as right capsule as well. We'll rotate it by 90 degree. So yeah, we have added our two assets. And currently it's not looking like a beam. It's just a capsule. We want it to have a ray or beam type effect. So we'll be scaling the for both. You can try out various combinations. I have tried and the suitable value which I have found was 30. If you can see like I, the earlier the scale was one and I have scaled it by 30. So it's like in 30 times. So that's why it has been increased from the center. That's 15 from the front and 15 from the back. We want it to start from the eye center. So we'll need to um, move the position of the capsule by a certain unit. So the unit will be 0.74. You can check this out. Now you can see this is all tested, uh, tested values, which I have got through some various hit and trial method. You can try out based upon your scale. You can try out for different scale as well and check the values. 
So if you can see when I've kept the position in Z axis by 0 0.74, it is currently exactly starting from the I center, the way we want it. We'll apply the same properties towards the right eye capsule as well. Increase it by 30, coordinate by 0 0.74. So now this is looking something of a beam emerging out of an eye, not the texture wise or design wise, but yeah, from the base template wise. We have successfully added our capsule. I hope till here it was all easy to add. If there's any query, do post it. I want this session to be both ways so that even I can see you are getting to understand and you can share your queries as well. Now we'll be adding a plane because currently you can see the rays is emerging, but it's not like uh, how a normal ray emits. It's like it, it should have a something start point, right? So for that, we'll be adding a star. Select the left type, right click, select add object and add a plane. Now you can see a plane has been added at the position of the left eye. We'll do the same. It's not the proper at the moment, but we'll up do the same for the right eye as well. Now it's too big for our requirement. We'll be scaling it down to half. That is 0 0.5. Change the scaling units for both the planes by 0 0.5. Select it. Rename it as L plane for the left eye. Or you can say L beam plane, anything you want based upon your naming conventions. It's right plane. Let's change the scaling values for this as well. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, for Z axis 0 0.5. So now it is looking better and you can see Now we'll apply the material to those planes. If you can see currently the plane is looking like a checkerboard because it looks like this, it's look like that because no material is applied here. If you go to the capsule one, you can see a material has been applied that is capsule mat. So that's why it's selecting a material, but for the plane, there's no material applied. That's why it's looking like a checkerboard. We'll apply a material. When you select plus and there's no material, it will automatically create a material that is material zero. Let's rename it to plane mat because the naming convention are seen is like that plane mat. Now we'll apply the same towards the right as well. So by default, Let's get dive into the material, how the different shader types are there and how material is assigned. So currently, like we created a material and by default, the shader type is standard. Standard follows a form model concept where it uh, it reflects like a normal or what we can say a real time light. If there's a beam of light, it will only showcase that particular beam or particular uh, ray reflecting other material. We'll use it, we'll change the material to flat because we don't want the light to change the properties of the material or the texture. So it's independent of a light. We have standard flat physical based is for making a real time material or a realistic material like metallic material or different. This face paint is only used if you want to apply certain color or certain texture towards the face or on the face. Blend mode is like combining two different materials. In shader asset is a shader code. So you can select the shader type to flat. The material has been changed to flat. You can see the color earlier because of the lighting, the color is dull, but now our flat material is independent of the lighting approach. So that's why it's pure white. You can see shader properties that is diffuse. You can have a combination of a color and a texture where we'll passing our star texture. So now you can see it's looking like something is emitting from the eye center and the beam is coming out of that. So it's making the effect little more immersive and uh, what we can say more uh, design wise enhanced, graphically enhanced. 
this color mode we have environment if you want to apply certain kind of lighting we apply with environment texture it's the alpha if you want to mask something out of it it's like if you want to have certain you can see if i click on star you see it's png file that's why it's transparent and only certain areas has the content otherwise it's white and, and apart from that it's totally transparent so that's alpha have the styling options you can tile is one by one is based upon scale if you want to increase by 10 it can also gets increased what the tiling does is it will multiply your asset by those values and offset is changing the position of that texture render options are like uh, render options contains blend modes for alpha associative alpha currently it's at by default it adds alpha if you want to change the blend mode to add so that whatever the two combinations you are providing either it is a color or it is a texture it gets added and blended in that way same goes for subtract multiply replace screen currently we'll be using add and later on we'll be making those changes and one more important property is cull mode basically uh, by default it's back what it does is the number of mesh or number of points that is away from that's not visible to the viewer gets uh, disabled it's not viewed or it's not show that cull mode black if you change it to front so the, so the number of points of the mesh present it's towards what uh, what we can say facing towards the viewer that's it is only visible if you are having a certain plane what is uh, what is visible what are the thing which is added at the back or at the back part so that's why we need to keep it back so it is opacity like if we want to decrease the opacity you can see i'll showcase it right here you can see the stars if you reduce the opacity it gets invisible if we increase it just gets more brighter based upon our requirements we can change and this material is used by left plane and r plane so this used by shows what wherever it is being used in a scene panel so now we have created our demo or what we can say as the raw file for our tried raise effect now we'll be applying materials because it's just looking not the way which was showcased earlier in the presentation so for that we'll be creating materials and changing cert certain properties plane mat then we'll be creating the capsule material will be changing to flat so like we change the material has been added to the material section so now you can also see it's totally white there is no light affecting the material or the texture because it's flat shader type is flat so now we'll be adding the our different set of uh, colors that is with your colors for the pride rays i can post the link in the chat is there any so here is the link so here you can copy the hex code where you will find the various color codes for the web your colors which will be using in our pride ray effect oscar can you check i am not able to post in the comment i am sharing in private so if you can pass this on with students Yeah, you, you can, can share. Yeah. Yes. You can share it in the private chat. I'll post it on. Yeah, I've done that. Okay, cool. So you can go to that website. You can see the various color codes, which is having a certain hex code. Hex code are basically color codes for the particular color, which computer can understand which color we are talking about. We'll go back to our Spark AR Studio. We'll be creating an option picker where we'll add all these colors. Select option picker. You can see an option value and its types. We'll change it to change the data type to color. Make the input to six because Pride Race contains six various colors. And with your apart from blue, everything is there. Every color is present in Pride Race. 
but before diving into that i would like to ask does anyone know why the pride race has this with your colors what is the aspect of the key reason because while creating an effect we should know what is the significance of that or why are we creating it can anybody share in the chat or can share their reviews in that because the pride race or rainbow color codes why are they used they have the six different colors red orange yellow green indigo and violet so the main reason for using this for the pride is for red indicates life orange indicates healing yellow indicates nature green indicates serenity indigo indicates spirit and violet indicates perspective so that is the reason why in choosing this colors so like if you are creating an effect you should know what's the aim of that or what's the perspective of using those things because if you if it's clear to you then you can directly explain it to your audience so now we'll be copying those hex code first let's copy for the violet go to this pakya studio go to, select the bottom most option you can see the uh, for this panel will be different for the different os and windows it might be different and for the mac os it might be different but you will get an option of hex color paste the color here and make sure your opacity is 100 or alpha is 100 alpha is 255 maximum so now you can see the violet has been added we'll do the same process for this indigo and all other colors six different colors add it as i said we don't require blue because it's not included in pride colors i like indigo green now it's yellow i hope everybody is understanding it and are able to implement the same we'll do for the orange and for the red it is pretty basic so i'll be just increasing the red color so yeah so we have created a set of options for our pride colors that is red orange yellow green indigo and violet so now we'll be assigning those colors those colors to our materials we'll be creating an input for them select the capsule mat make sure it's the shader type is flat go to the diffuse section select the texture create the input for it so what if the output comes out from the option picker or you can select pride colors you can name the patches as well so that it's clear to you based upon your understanding pride colors or pride options you can go and select the output now you can see the color has been changed and we will be manipulating the values as we have six different colors but in spark yeah, but here basically it starts with programming aspect everything starts with zero by default it's zero not one so make sure if you are having six different colors so zero will be red one would be orange two would be yellow three would be green four would be indigo and five would be violet so now to make it a beam type of perspective we will be changing changing our blend mode to add because we don't want it alpha it should look like a beam so now you can see it's looking like something is emitting out of the eye here so our half part of the project has been done but we'll make it more immersive and we also want the, uh, to apply the same color to our emitting point or starting point that is stars so what we'll do is select the texture drag and drop into the patch editor and we want to apply the same color to it so we'll use the multiply patch so what it will do is it will multiply do the co same color with star and it will make the asset like same for the beam 
similar to the beam. So select on plane mat. Make sure the shader type is flat. Go to diffuse. Create the input for the texture. A pass on the texture output from this color picker with multiply in the plane. So now you can see our star is also turned the same color as we wanted. Now we have created the material. We have applied material correctly. Now we'll be creating the logic of by changing it. How we can change it or how it can because if it's the same, how the user will get to know how to change it. So this will be the different standard colors. So now we can have we have two options of creating those interactions. Either we can go for touch based interaction or contact based in interactions, or we can go for contactless or touchless. So for touch, it will be like a, when tapping on the screen, the color will change. Or for uh, touchless, we can go for raising your eyebrows, opening your mouth. We have predefined uh, capabilities which we can be using for this. So I will be show, showcasing you first what if we want to make, create for the screen tap or touch based interaction. Double click or you can select the add patch. You can select sc screen tap. You can search for screen tap. Select the screen tap patch, hit enter. Now it will get added into the patch editor. So for whenever the screen is tapped, it will pass on a pulse. You can see we will create a value patch which will showcase to you a pulse is passed whenever the user taps on the screen. Whenever I tap on my screen, so it will this simulator, this is how it will look like on your device. So that's when whenever the user taps on the screen, it will pass on a pulse, just like the same. So we will be creating a counter like how we used to create whenever a user taps, it should increase a counter by one so that it, the color gets passed to the next one. So the maximum count is six because we have six, uh, six different set of color options. So now this is how the logic for a touch based interaction. Now you can see if I tap on the screen, the color will get changed automatically and it will increment by one. And what if uh, you reach to the last option in a counter, it will go back to the same. It's like it's in looped, synchronized way. If the user reaches to the last option that is fifth, and the user taps again, it will jump back to zero. So this is how we can create you. You can create a first AR effect that is pride raise. There's a theme for this workshop. If you have any queries, you can post it in the comment section. And now I'll be teaching you. This was the one way of creating a touch base. What if you want to create a touchless? If like oh, your phone is at a particular distance, you want to showcase your friends without touching the device. We can also go for that. So where we'll be requiring this face find, face find a patch. You can take it a little or drag it a little back. You can go for face. Select it and search for eyebrows. Eyebrow raised. So the screen tab generate a pulse like we have different data types. It will also generate a Boolean value. A Boolean value is either zero or one. So whenever the user raises their eyebrows, it will give you a pulse. So I can show you here. If you can see if I'm going to raise an eyebrow, it will generate a value. Boolean like this. Just a second. So that it recognize it proper. Yeah, you can see it's passing a pulse on raising the eyebrow. And like we have different set of accuracy to detect a user face. So one pro tip would be you can go to the project. Select it, edit properties. And go to experiences, you can go to capabilities. You can select the face tracking and create, uh, change the accuracy to high so that it will detect precisely. And you, if you are having two faces, then you need to change the face to two, otherwise it's proper. 
capabilities, phase tracking, maximum phase one, it can go to five phases based upon your requirement. We want only one phase at the moment and accuracy should be high. So it's good to go. So now, like I have created a value, we don't need it anymore. So we'll be creating a pulse. So which will convert the Boolean signal into a pulse. Like screen tap provides an output of pulse and it's go counter also takes the input of pulse. So the both states are same from the input side and the output side. But if it's not, it will provide an error or it will create one for you, bridge the gap in between. But just I wanted to show how the Boolean values are passed to a pulse based input. So now you can see if I raise my eyebrow. It changes color automatically. So this is how you can create a contactless based effect or capability. So this is the logic behind it. Make an input from the face tracker. You can search for various inputs as well. If you want eyebrow raised, you can select eyebrow. You can find out various, you can explore various options. I left eye closed, eyebrow lowered also option is there. Right eye closed option is there. Then you can also have mouth open. If I want for the mouth open, mouth open provides the Boolean value again. So we can change it. If I'm opening my mouth, it will change the value. Based upon your requirement, you can play with it. So this is how you, if you want to create a touchless or touch based interaction, you can choose wisely based upon your requirement. So we have successfully created our first effect. Kudos to everyone who have got to the, or who is present at the same track to till now. If you have any queries while creating this effect till here, you can post in comment section. So the tech wise it's proper, but currently if I'm, if you are going to share with your friends, so you know, and I know that while tapping on the screen or while raising your eyebrows, this effect works, but for the new person who doesn't know how to change the color, so that there should be some sense of interactivity or instructions present on the screen so that they can get the idea. Okay. If you want to change the color, we need to do something. Some interaction is required. We'll change that back to the mascot. So for that, we'll be adding an instruction. Meta or the Spark AI Studio has certain set of instructions by default present in. So if you want to create an instruction, you can go, select device, go to the inspector panel. You can select custom instructions. You can select tap to start, tap to try on, tap to place, but no, we want tap to change. So it will create an input inside the effect with a certain logic. We'll placing it in here. So what's the logic behind this? It's a runtime patch. So runtime basically provides, if you want to know what exactly there is the runtime patch do, it provides track the time that passed since the effect started running. So whenever the user will open this effect on their devices, the timer will start from that point. Now you can see, so you can see the time is going on. Like whenever the restart, it will start with zero and it will go on continuously because it's the time the uh, after which the effect has started. Timer going on. So currently what condition we have kept, if I pause, if you can see the condition is timer or runtime value less than five. What we have in the second output, second input, it's five. So if the value is less than five, so it should give the condition. If condition is there, if the first input that is the runtime value is less than five, then it should give a Boolean value that is either zero or one true or false. So yes, because the timer is less than zero at the moment, it is providing a true value. So that's why it's making uh, the instructions enabled. So now you can see the instruction will be visible in the bottom part of the simulator, but on your device, when you test out on your devices, it will be the middle or the center of your screen. 
see you can see tab to change it will be there till the condition is satisfied and it might go once it's the condition is not satisfied now you can see the timer is greater than 5 so that's why it has disabled the instruction token it's not visible yet so this is how once the instructions are visible on the user's device they get to know they need to do something to change those colors to uh, to feel the immersivity of this experience because if they start it they will just like it's okay it's just the red color there are no other color but if you want to navigate them direct them to change it you need to add those instructions so this instruction was for the screen tap but what if you want for the eyebrow raised or mouth open i will guide you how to do that you can go to the properties select edit properties you can go to capabilities you can select instructions then go for custom instructions so currently at the moment our effect is using just tap to change so that's why it's added we can add others as well we can go for eyebrow so there is an instruction known as raise your eyebrow if you select it it will be automatically get added and a token will be generated that tokens needs to pass the device instruction if i'm going to double click on that copy it and paste it here so if now you can see raise your eyebrows is there so what are the token you will pass it will stay active till the particular condition is active or true and if you want for the mouth open you can click on plus you can check out the various instructions default instructions provided by spark based upon your requirements i if i want to create for mouth open so you can have open or mouth to start open your mouth and let's go back to the same we need to go to the properties capabilities instructions custom instruction for mouth you need to copy the token and paste it in a token value wait a second it's not pasted control c control so the mouth open token is paid has been applied if i am going to reset you can see open your mouth so whatever the token you pass it will show that so this is how you can add instructions in your effect if you want to have different conditions for this properties you can change based upon your requirements like if you don't want uh, if you want to increase the run time make it 7 or make it any quantity you want you can change that at the uh, till the condition is active at the instruction will be visible or if you want to change based upon other uh, what we can say other logic you can also try that so we have successfully created our first ar effect that is pride rays which is having a beam of ray starting from the eye center and the effect is more um, like immersive as immersive as we wanted you can try out different combination as well if you want to have a loop it's like it's on with it's like if you don't want user to change it it should automatically change so you can create a loop animation basically search for the loop animation patch add to in patch editor what will happen is it go till the time it's enable it will go infinite duration what is the duration is one so every every one every one second is passed it will generate a pulse that is loop so now you can see at every one second the color is changing automatically if you want to increase the duration to two you can also do that so whenever if you want a certain conditions to go on infinite duration we use loop animation patch is uh, you just want it once so you can use animation patch but currently here if you want it automatic so you can use loop animation you can change the duration you can reset it if you disable it it will stop so this is how we create our first effect now one thing which i would do is option picker will save those tokens so if based upon our requirements we can change it we only require three tokens we'll changing the input we'll again go back to the properties capabilities 
instructions, copying those instructions so that we can store it at the place. Select those instructions, copy it, paste as a text. Yeah, you can change the data type to text to store this. Tap to change and open mouth. Open. So you can create the input for the token. So you can, based upon your requirement, if it's screen tap, you can keep the option to one. So that is tap to change. If it's mouth open, you can keep the option to two, zero, one, two. So that just a second, it's not mouth open. Let's tap to change. We'll change it. Control. Yeah, now it's proper. So raise your eyebrows, tap to change and open mouth. You can change as per your need. You can keep as you want. So currently if I'm keeping this, yeah, so that's done. If I'm keeping the screen tap, if and you want to test it out your on your device, make sure first you save it. Your effect is saved. This is how it will look like workshop, whatever the name you have given the path. Now we'll be generating a test link to test this effect. We have successfully created our effect. So we'll be passing on, we'll be sending it toward our devices. Either you can connect your devices with uh, USB cable and make sure you, uh, USB debugging is on if you want to use mobile Spark Air player. If like if you don't have internet connection or it's not present at the moment, you just want to try it on your device with a wired way, wired connection, you can test it out. You need to download Spark Air player from App Store or Play Store based upon your smartphone device type and then you can send it. So at the moment, I'm not having any device connected. So that's why this option is not available for me. What I will do is I will pass to my Instagram account. So it's uploading towards the Spark Yard Hub. It will also generate a link once it's done. It can take a while. To upload it so yeah the test link is ready so what you can do is you will you might get a notification on your smartphone or instagram app with preview.export by your username try preview.export uh, by username in the notification section if it will open that it will ask you with the three prompts to continue because the currently the moment effect is not published so that's why it will ask for uh, for your con uh, condition to approve it. So you can click on continue, then the effect will be applied in the effect tray. Or if you want to pass it this effect with your friends or family, you can copy the link, you can select this option, copy link and send it to them. So whatever the effect we have created, it will be visible or it will be able to try out by your friends and family. So this is how you generate the test links. Like we discussed, if you want to publish the effect, how is the process? So if there's any query till here, please, uh, note down or drop down in this checkbox so that I can take it because till here, I hope everything is clear to you guys. The later stage and this is the last stage, which will be how to publish an effect. I will demonstrate after that if there is any query. You can try out, you can test different conditions. If you have any queries, you can post it now. I'll be happy to take that. And if not, like I'm providing you one or two minutes just to check this out till here. Is it working properly on a device? Oscar, do share if there are any queries from students. You can check on with uh, different mascots so that you can get to know how it's looking on a different users.
so that we can get a per- perspective how the general audience or how do you looking on general audience by testing out on different different users and change the view mode to front so this is how it's going to look so yeah if there is no query let's proceed you can click on the publish button from here you can get a different options it's like what do you want to do first publish the new effect if you have already published some effect you can select this update you can select your instagram account and the effect name it will get updated automatically but as it is we are publishing our first effect so you need to select publish new effect demo video which can you which you can add later on platform requirements we will be looking as a file rec- file sizes so currently our effect is very low end or what we can say very optimized so that's why it's the file sizes is 187 kb only for ios android it's roughly 200 kb for all the, across all the platforms so here it shows clearly like for facebook you can create up to 10 mb for instagram you can create up to 4 mb for all the across all the platforms either it's android or ios we will go back it meets if the if if the if our textures or assets meets the requirements it will show a green tick capabilities met the requirements because we wanted to create for instagram and facebook app you can recheck the capabilities if you want to or experience platforms for instagram and facebook it's all good to go so now either you can export the file if you want to export click on export so it will create an export file with an extension dot ar export basically i have created a folder uh, export folder where i export all mo- all my files you can select the you can give the name and you can click the save button so it will the file will be exported towards the directory or path if you want to publish it directly you can click on upload so it will be uploading and taking you to the spark yar hub so this is how the interface of the hub looks like spark yar hub publish an effect you can give the name you want if you want to name it like pride rays pride laser pride beam and you want you can give based upon your requirements whatever you feel necessary make sure it goes with the length under the 20 characteristic length as the file name which we have added has been exported with file workshop effect so select the platforms with specific platforms if you want to just select for instagram or just facebook you can turn and toggle off the uh, options as we have just selected the shared ar effect category so that's why it's just showing for the shared platforms if we would if we would have enabled it for video calling effects also then it would be available for video calling but we have just create created for sharing experience this link should be public anyone to the platform can use your effect if you want anyone on the platform to use your effect you can select this option but if you just want only the people with those links to try your effect then you can select this option link only and you can select the owner account make sure your instagram account is linked with your facebook account so you can get the options uh you will have a publisher who is the publisher like if i'm creating for my own platform then you your name would be shown here you can have your instagram and facebook account done categories you need to provide those categories that is what categories does it follow is it immersive innovative effects that immerse people into story or scene yes it follows under immersive category uh, then appearance uh, then world ar is there so if you are creating for world ar effect then it either it's like uh, plane tracking or uh, it's like it uses your secondary camera then it's world ar effect games uh, it's it is a gamified effect no appearance cosmetic cosmetized or style effect that enhance someone's appearance if you want to go with that you can go with it if it falls under your criteria uh, selfies effect that applies to the face or the front facing camera yes our effect applies to that 
a lovely gesture of love and positivity yeah you can select as a symbol of pride as a gesture or gra expressing gratitude you, if you want to maximum only four you can select the categories is it love uh, then it is weird and scary no our effect is not weird and scary is it sci-fi or fantasy type uh, then you can select that option is it anim it's uh, what we can say using any animal form or any animal animalistic appearance then you can select this option fandom causes color and light manipulation of vivid colors of light if you think it's proper you can select it camera style events surroundings funny mood you can select this option now moving forward that's a keyword so you can add up to 20 keywords effects with the keywords get more engagement on average so basically the what the keyword does is the our effect name is pride rays but if we have applied the keywords like pride rays pride lasers pride beam pride or any other key, uh, certain keywords and user suggests user searches for those exact keywords so your effect will shows up first even though the user have, won't have searched for pride rays but whatever the keywords you have passed, uh, it will help the user to find your effect easier. In the demo video, make sure how you can do it. First, you can select save. Then you can go for, wait for it till it gets saved. I hope it was exciting and intriguing to learn. So, you should give yourself a round of applause because you just created an effect. You might be publishing it soon. Your first Instagram AR effect. So you can see, uh, open your effect in the camera to record. You can open an app if you want to. If you want to test on your device, click on test on your device. You can see the owner's name would be shown here. Then you can click on send. And if you don't, if you want to test on some other device, you can copy the link and share it only 50 users at the moment will be able to try it once your effect is published it uh, it is it will be visible to everyone and everyone can try the test links are only for 50 users it's like on 50 different uh, users can try this test link otherwise it will get expired you need to refresh it you can select the platform you want to then done pass out the link then uh, you can uh, record from either instagram app you don't need to screen record it it's against the uh, it's again the spark ad policy which will be showcase i will be explaining those policy tomorrow in our day two of our workshop but today how the publishing process goes that's how we are gonna uh, see so once you have saved your video you can upload it you can connect your phone or you can share it over email choose the file and then public uh, select the video if you have a certain icon you can also select an icon by default it's spark your logo you can select, uh, so by default, this is icon and it should be off a minimum 250 by 250 pixels. It can go till 480 or it should be in square only basically. If you have an image and if you want an icon, just like how you can see the icon would be visible like this. Your icon, your name and the video will play behind. You can click on replace and provide an icon. And then publication date as soon as possible, a set time and date. If you want the, uh, if you want, what's the publication process? If you're creating or some day or particular event, you want it only to get triggered or turned on or published at that particular set of time or date, you can choose the second option. Otherwise you can go to the first one. And if other, if there, if your friend or any other creator who has helped you while creating this effect, you can select, click on add collaborators. Then you can write down their Facebook name or username. And then you can click on submit. Once you click on submit, it uh, it takes regarding five days, a maximum of five days uh, under the review process to get verified and accepted. So this is how it does, how you can publish your first Instagram AR effect or uh, first augmented reality AR effect for Instagram uh, meta platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, and Messenger. Once you find your, what we can say, demo video and icon, you can click on submit. Just because we don't have it at the moment, that's why we won't be able to submit. But once you have it, you can click on submit and it will showcase to you that it's in review. And once the effects are approved, they look like this, like visible, 
then they will get the insights what are the opens are there captures are there impressions and shares so this is how the dashboard looks like getting back to our spark ai studio we have successfully created our first effect so if there's any query do let me know even if you have queries uh, apart from that you can post those queries either in chat section or later if you want you can drop down those queries on linkedin so yeah we have successfully created our effect i hope everyone would have understood it properly and the pace was also proper thank you guys i hope it was easy to understand till here so yeah back to you oscar is there anything else uh thank you bal it was an insightful session and thank you everyone for joining us for the first workshop we'll have another workshop tomorrow where pal will be teaching you how to add other elements to the ar effect and we'll be talking about spark ar policies so see you tomorrow thank you and have a good day thank you guys bye